good. Maybe. Ooh, that's not a good order. Sorry. This lighting is so hard. Good enough. Hey guys. So you haven't seen my face in a while, probably. But um, I'm back in a different place again. I've been in my closet, just outside of my closet, on a chair in front of my desk. And now here we are under my desk. So today I just, just wanted to talk about my summer, you know, kind of condense everything that happened. All, all my new experiences and things I have to say about it in this one cozy little video. I'll be talking about crochet, what I've read this summer, you know, all the things I like to do. Like, who needs a niche anyway when you can just talk about whatever you want, guys? Like, it's my channel, I can do whatever I want. But anyways, um, yeah, let's start with just, I guess, an overview, really, of what happened this summer. This video is also kind of like a crochet with me, slash story time. It can be whatever I want it to be. It's my channel, it's my video, it's my stuff. So, summer's almost over, which, you know, just like everyone else, every other student, makes me really sad. I, I do kind of miss like having something to do with my days like in the summer if you're not doing anything like if you're not volunteering or you don't have camp it's really easy to just spend all day like on your phone or on your laptop and honestly I've been trying not to do that and so, you just get so bored you get so drained it's not fun But, you know, you Americans are back at school, if you are an American student. But me, myself, I am Canadian, so I have another one or two weeks of freedom before I go back. Honestly, I'm kind of excited to go back to school. It's like, yeah, during the summer I don't have homework, but like I said, you know, you get so bored, you know, you end up... It's, sometimes you end up spending the entire day just letting your brain like dissolve away on the internet but like you know trying to enjoy these last one or two weeks um so far this summer i've done like one or two summer camps like i'm getting i'm getting i'm i'm already a little too old for summer camps next year i think it might be out of the question with one exception which i will talk about so um the first week of summer july 4th to 7th i did this little clay workshop it was just um these mini clay projects i made this cute little bubble tea store i also did a candy shop i will actually i will grab you that's bubble tea store, give me a second. Yeah, here it is. Cute little bubble tea shop. Can't show you the store because I had family over from America and my little cousin, uh, so I can't, I'm not gonna tell you that. But this one is still intact. It's very nice. I had to make every, most of the things on this from clay. I had to paint a lot of the stuff too. Like I painted those strawberries, if you can see them. I painted a lot of the fruit. I painted the pastries at the bottom. You can't really get a clear look, but like, that's general idea of what I did. But yeah, it was just really sad. It was really satisfying though to all see it like come together, and that was a pretty good week. But yeah, I had a week of a break, and then after that, 
super exciting. I went to a sleepaway camp. So that was the first time I've ever been to a sleepaway camp. It was way up in northern Canada and I was there for like two weeks. It was truly sleepaway camp. It's not like you just go to some local, it's not some local summer camp where you just happen to be like spending your nights there. No, it's like you're in a, you're on like an island. You have to, you go there on a like a bus and then they have boats that take you like from the mainland as they called it to the island yeah so two weeks of summer camp there I had a lot of fun experiences i could talk about that in an entire 20 minute video on its own but um a couple highlights i went tubing for the first time you know first sleep boy camp it was really fun the ages were like 5 to 17 so there was like some really young people there like if i was a mother i could not send my five-year-old child to like be alone not like alone, but with other children and counselors, you know, but like with but like just a five-year-old like going out there on their own, you know. I would be nervous. I would not like send my five-year-old there, but you know. I guess parents I have no right to judge parents because I'm not a parent myself. I know nothing about parenting, but you know, I would be a little bit apprehensive if I was a mother. But anyways. So I went, I did tubing for the first time, which was pretty fun really but like I had bruises on my legs from like I called it water burn I don't know if that's an actual term but like our driver the driver of the boat that took me tubing he went really fast he drove the boat so aggressively like I went on this tube with a friend I made there and then we, we told him to go slower because I was constantly, my legs were constantly falling off the tube and I was actually like fully let go and fell into the water but my legs kept like going to the side and just like hitting the water really hard which is how I got the bruises. We told him to go slower and I'm pretty sure he went faster but you know all in all it was pretty fun aside from, aside from yeah water burn but I also at the island at this camp I took a specialty program I was doing like gymnastics which was really fun but also I had to do like every day for like 14 days straight which was pretty tiring but it was like I got used to it after like the first three or four days and after that it was pretty fun I got a lot of new skills um, my coach was amazing she was super nice main point is it was a lot of fun point is it was a lot of fun but you would spend like three hours which is like half of your activity periods in the in the gym if you were in the gymnastics program we also had like um trampoline and water skiing and also aerials which also i tried aerials for the first time there they had like one of the activities you could sign up for was like aerials i did aerial silks and aerial hoops and actually i was pretty good at it like you get these awards for achieving certain skills i got like my bronze in gymnastics my bronze in trampoline and my silver in aerial hoops. I also got my bronze in aerial silks. So like that, I, I have grown to love aerials so much, even though I'm not that good at it. Like I can do some like intermediate, you could say things, but I only had, like, I only worked on it like every other day. But like considering the fact that like over the course of two weeks, you know, I did pretty good, I'd say. But, you know, most important thing is I had a fun. Oh, this probably should not have filmed here. I'm too tall to be filming under my desk. And uh, my neck is going to be all broken after this. But I'm too lazy to move now. So here we are. Anyways, there's not much to say about camp. If I start talking about it more, I'll talk about it for ages. And I just like... That could be its own video, but anyway, super fun. My cabinets were super nice. There was a lot of drama, actually, which, you know, I might actually talk about that in this, this video, but I want to run over all the main points first. But, yeah, so I went to camp for two weeks. I came home, saw my family again. Like, the camp was fun or whatever, but obviously I missed home because that was, like, the longest time I'd ever spent away from, like, the city, the city I live in. So yeah, good experience, kind of scary. I developed my social skills a little bit, made some friends, made some memories. You know, ov like overall a pretty good experience. So after, after that, 
I had another little break and then like last week I had a pottery camp where I, I did, just did like, you know, I made pots and plates and vases. I actually made a teapot too, which I'm really proud of. Um, I painted them and everything and I'm gonna be able to pick them up in like three weeks. So I'm really excited to see like the results because I painted some really cute designs on them. Like on, I had this bowl, it was white. The rims were like gold and I painted like these little cherries on them, like around the outside of the bowl. It was like really cute. I'm excited to see how it turns out. Like obviously I'm not a professional, but also like that was really fun. Super proud of the teapot too. I painted it black and the rim's red. I might do a video like showing off what I did. But um, yeah, so there's that. And then I did that in the morning. So that was like a half day workshop from nine to 12. And then I would go to the mall to eat lunch from 12 to one. Uh, me and my sister were doing these things together, like everything I've mentioned so far. And then in the afternoon, I would be volunteering at the place that I went to to make the, bu the bubble tea store, except I was volunteering there. So I was helping like even younger kids like make these little projects, be like teaching them. I had these two kids that I was in charge of all week. I was teaching them how to make the candy shop because I had made it so I knew like what to do and stuff. But it was super fun, the kids were super cute, even if they like didn't listen to me sometimes. You know, I gained some experience, I learned some things about like working with younger children, which honestly would be, will be really helpful for like when I volunteer later on, because probably a lot of it will be like summer camp volunteering, like I did, you know, working with kids. I, like I always thought, that like working with kids like nine, 10, six, seven, eight, nine year olds, that they would be like really annoying to deal with. Like I always assumed they would be really annoying to deal with. Just wouldn't listen to me. But like honestly, there's some really like cute, nice kids. The, my young, the younger kid of the two that I had, she sometimes like she would get bored really easily, right? Cause sometimes like we had to make like a hundred balls out of this like red, red clay to make like a hundred candy apples and then she would get bored halfway through and then just like stop doing it and then i would have to be like oh my god please focus <laughs> and then like yeah like that that part was like a little annoying to deal with but it's like it didn't hate it because like you know kids are just like that you have to you have to encourage them a little bit like cut them some slack guys they're just kids like i'm saying that as if like you who are who was watching me did something wrong but no i'm just projecting kids really do have a lot of depth in them like younger kids obviously you know they have a they have a lot of depth that you don't expect like the general consensus seems to be that like you know 12 year olds 13 year olds they're also like childish which yeah i guess like some some are like really naive or don't like they still have this childlike naivete. They like don't care about worldly problems. They only think of themselves really. But no, like a lot of kids, they're like, like, okay. Basically what I'm trying to say is these kids, like they're, our fu they're the future of the world. I'm also the future of the world, I could say, you know? Cause like I'm still young even like too. I know I'm not the smartest person in the world. I don't know everything. I mean, I'm still in school. But like with even younger kids, like elementary school kids, like they have a lot to say about some things. Like sometimes they're not as naive or dumb as we think, you know? It's always good to just listen to them. And I like to believe that I was a good influence on them while I was volunteering there for that week but yeah it was super fun i might go back again maybe next week to have something to do in the last week of summer but yeah it was fun i'm so happy so proud of them when they finished their candy shops it's a good experience you know overall it's been a really good summer okay so that's like the big things i did this summer but let's go over 
Now let's go over a little bit of what I like crocheted. So you can see what I'm crocheting right now. You might wonder what it is. So this is a square for this tote bag I'm making. So I'm going to, so these are the pink squares. I'm basically gonna like be stitching them together. I'm gonna be doing like this pattern. I need, I need 18 squares in total. I'm using three colors, so I need six of each. I finished all the pink squares. See here, one, two, three, four, five, six. I've made two white ones, one, two, and then this is the third one. So I'm gonna be using this pink, white, and I also have this blue. Not brand new, went yarn shopping recently. It was super fun. I got some new colors, and uh, I was really running out of some of them, so I restocked them. But yeah, so there's, I'm gonna make a tote bag because, you know, I don't have a tote bag. So bas basically, I don't even have a purse even. So basically, if, I have only a few things, you know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear, I'm gonna wear the pants or shorts with pockets, so I can just put them in my pockets. If not, I don't have a purse. I don't have a fanny pack, which means I automatically go up to the backpack. I only have those tiny backpacks. I only have bigger backpacks. So I want something like medium. So I'm gonna make this tote bag and put my stuff in it. And hopefully, I want to get it done by Friday. Today is Tuesday, August 22nd. I want to get it done by Friday. Because on that day, I'm going to CNE, uh, the Canadian National Exhibition in, in Toronto. It's super exciting. It's a, just this yearly festival with like rides and shows and food booths and games. You know, your classic, your standard festival. Anyway, I went last year with friends. I'm going with the same friend this year. It's going to be super fun. I'm gonna talk about it in a video, but yeah. Um, so I want to do that. I want to make this to bring to CNE on Friday because I don't think I'll be bringing too many things. So I'd rather just have a tote bag rather than carry on a backpack on my back all day. So I also crocheted this cute little mushroom, this mushroom square. So basically, I was like. I was getting curious about crocheting with graphs because I wanted to crochet these little signs. So I I looked up on YouTube how to, how to crochet with graph, and I found one. And first thing I did was cherry using a graph, and it is honestly so cute. I love I love how it turned out really. But this is how the back looks. So the way I learned to do it was just float the yarn. So the ugly side and the good side. I'm thinking, I'm thinking I might do a big graph, like a 50 by 50 stitch graph and of like some design, maybe a dragon or something, I made a dragon, and just have that be a tote bag. But that might, I'm afraid of time consuming things. Honestly, this tote bag really intimidated me because these squares don't take that long at all. They take like 30 to 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how focused I am. But it's like 18 squares, you know? And I get bored easily. Which is why this is great for me, honestly, because you keep on having to change colors. But, you know, like, big projects are really intimidating. So I might do it someday, but now that I have this tote bag, it might not be for a while. But that's an idea I have. It's definitely on my two, um, two crochet. Yeah, basically, I'm gonna this mushroom, second thing. I'm um, really proud of it. Um, this is a good little design for fall. You know, I'm trying to get into the mushrooms, the pumpkins, um, fall sweaters, you know, moving out of the crop tops and halter tops and tank tops and, and shorts and starting to move into the fall season. Honestly, I'm really ready for it to be fall. I'm tired of the summer heat. And I know I'm like not one to complain because it's not like I live in Arizona, I live in Canada. And like, you know, the whole thing is that like it's super cold up here, but really in the summer, like in Ontario, it's like, it's like pretty, it gets pretty hot sometimes. It's like global warming and stuff. Like at, like today was like, well, it, at least to me, it felt like 30 degrees. But anyways. Yeah, it's, it's been pretty hot. So I'm ready for the cozy, all vibes. I'm not into like pumpkin spice lattes. 
but I do want to read a lot of like cozy books for the fall. I decided for that too. I'll talk about books later. But um, yeah. I also crocheted this. I'm super proud of this. I love my little fishnet sleeves. We'll be wearing this to see any. Honestly, I've never seen like another, like someone I know, or even like a stranger in person, like wearing this, like, wear, like wearing these fishnet sleeves. I don't know if maybe it's just not that many people like them, but honestly, I think it goes really well over like ta my tank tops and like I crocheted this too a while back in June. Uh, you can't really tell that it's crocheted because you know, crappy camera. But like, you can see some of the rib stitching. It was just a bunch of half double crochets over and over and over again. This project took me, I procrastinated on this so much. Like not on doing it, but on starting it. Once I started it, it was like, I want to be done with this. But you know, it, it was really intimidating to like start something like this. And it took so long. And the first time that I finished it, I cut my yarn, I cast it off. That's a knitting term. Whatever. I cut the yarn. And it was too big. I tried it on and it was too big. Like this is before I put on these straps, but it was too big. I had to undo the knot, pull a bunch of it out, cut the yarn, and then I thought for sure, oh, it's good now. I fixed it. And I tried it on it. It was still too big. I overestimated it. I just wrapped it around and then it just like fit perfectly the first time. Like it met in the middle. No, you have to leave. I know now you have to leave a little bit of room for it to stretch. I took out like five more rows and then finally it had a good fit. And then I did these straps, which I will not talk about the straps. The straps taught, got me a lot of pain too. This whole, this, this dilemma thing, this whole, actually these two combined, I can make an entire video about the suffering I went through to finish them. But here's your little like summary version. Anyways, then recently I made this, these fishnet sleeves. Again, super proud of them, super cute, I think. I don't know, what do I know? But yeah, super proud of these. By the way, I don't make my own patterns. I always use someone else's or like use a graph. I don't know how to make my own, but I really want to learn. So maybe that's something to do on the bucket list for fall. Anyways, yeah, I did the front panel, the neck hole, and the back panel. And then I did the sleeve. So this this furry sleeve, 12 inches around, turned out really nice. I mean, 12, 12, 12 stitches around, turned out really nice. Perfect length, I love it. The second one. Caused me so much pain. The first time, it was it end, the the end of the sleeve was 15 stitches around. It looked so uneven when I went like this. This sleeve was like was like this, and this sleeve was like down there or something. It was it was horrible. I I accidentally did two stitches in one in one hole twice. And then I had to like remove the whole sleeve and then do it again. And then when I, I got to 18 rows, this sleeve is 20 rows. I figured out that this is 13 stitches. Originally when I counted this sleeve, it was 13 stitches, but I miscounted and it's actually 12. Which 12 is this fit that's good for my arm. So now this one's a bit bigger. You can probably tell, but like if you're, when you're moving around and stuff, it's like, it's like not that big of a deal. But so I made it 18 rows instead of 20 rows, so that, like, if you just stretched it, then it would be the same. That was probably a stupid decision, but honestly, I didn't want to remove it, because that means I would have to, have, to re have to redo this part too, because I had to, I slip stitched this to get the seam under the arm to get the correct amount of stitches for the armhole. I, I did 13. I did the around, right amount of slip stitches for 13. It was supposed to be 12, and I messed up again, and I refuse to redo it. I'm going to be happy with what I have now. So that's what I've crocheted recently. I did crochet a lot of more things, but I gave them all to other people. Like I made this like a Miffy keychain. So, Miffy's like this cartoon bunny with an X for a mouth. And I made like this soccer keychain, this bell flower keychain, which is really cute. And um, this butterfly keychain. I can't show you guys that. I might put up pictures if I can find them, but I'm probably not going to be able to. But yeah, so that's what I've been up 
to in terms of crochet. Now, in terms of what I've been reading, um, I need to check my Goodreads to see, to see what I've read in the past month. Okay, so, but currently I'm reading Normal People by Sally Rooney. And honestly, I've, I've been really liking this book so far. I'm like 200 pages in, there's like, I can't remember how many pages there are, but there's 300 something. It's about Connell and Marianne and their relationship. So it started out in high school, um, Connell was popular, Marianne was not, and you know, they started like the secret relationship. But then they both went off to college and Marianne was popular and Connell was like stranded. He was unsure because he was, he wasn't popular. Like he was in high school, so different. And they were like on and off. They, they, they weren't in a relationship and then they were in a relationship again. And then they just weren't and they both got, they, they, they both got into new relationships. And they're, I mean, I love the way that Sally Rooney wrote this. It's not. I don't know if it's like second person or something, but it's not first person. But it's also not really third person. And when a character speaks, she doesn't put it in quotation marks. I don't know, I just really like the style. You have to like read it. I'm not good at explaining books. But like, this book spans over like five years. And it doesn't feel weird how fast time is passing. Because every time they do a time skip, they have figure out some way to be able to like catch you up on on the past, on the time that's passed, without just like, without just saying, without just one of the characters being like, oh, remember this and this and this that happened, and they explain it in full detail. It's just like, ugh, it's such a good book so far. I'm loving it. Like the whole psychological thing of their relationship. It's just so nuanced. And like, it feels like they're relying, like they always, no matter, they always keep straying toward different possibilities in their life, but they keep coming back to each other, you know? Like, Imagine there's this person, okay, basically to each other, they are the people in their life that have been, they have been the common variable in their lives. Like their lives, both of their lives have changed and they've become different people and they've met different people and they've had new experiences, but for, for them, each other was the common variable in their lives. The one familiar thing and all the crazy stuff that's happening in their lives. I don't know if I explained it well. But yeah, I'm I'm really enjoying it. I might do an entire video on it when I finish it, but you know, not. So I also read Family of Liars, which is a prequel to We Were Liars. I gave it five out of five stars. It was so good. You learn about um what's his name's mother. I can't remember, but it was it was the dude. It was Oh my god. Anyways, Sinclair family, one of the mothers of the children from the first book, from, from the main book, We Were Liars. It's about um, her experience being a Sinclair and spending all the summers on the island when she was a teenager. And of course, a bunch of stuff happened. Like they're the Sinclairs, but they have to keep a positive front. And it's this perfect family on the outside, but really everyone is like suffering and they have flaws and they pretend not to be sad and they push down their feelings but really inside it's like it's about to explode it's another like very psychological book you could say i loved it and um the other book i read this month was the lightning thief the first book in the percy jackson series it, it makes me feel this thing it's it makes me feel so weird because it's like i I don't, I, I like, I kind of like it now, like four out of five stars, but I knew if I read it around when I was like set eight, nine, eight or nine, like around when I read Harry Potter, I knew I would have loved it, I would have fallen in love with it, but instead I was on the Harry Potter side of eight to nine year old readers, I went, I went Harry Potter over Percy Jackson, but I'm going back to it now, so don't, so don't feel like, because I got a lot of phone calls in that, I was like, because every, because all my reader because all my fellow reader friends were like, oh my god, you have to read Percy Jackson. How have you not read Percy Jackson? So now I am. 
um, I re I'm learning a lot about Greek mythology, which honestly I've always been interested in, so this is like a fun way to learn about it. I'm not gonna go too much into it about the plots and stuff, I'm just having so much fun with it, you know? I don't wanna overanalyze it, or overcomplicate it, or feel stressed to explain it. I just enjoyed it, it, felt, it made me feel nostalgic for something that, I, that I'd never even read before, you know? The Harry Potter feel. Harry Potter was really successful. Anyways, um, that has been that has been my summer really. I don't know. This has been sort of a journal detailing the past couple months of my the past two months of my life. You know. A very condensed version, like a lot of other stuff went on. Like I, I booked my piano exam for September 28th. I'm super stressed about that. I have a violin exam coming up in January-ish. You know, there's a bunch of stuff about school starting soon. I went to Wonderland a couple times this summer. Got over a lot of my fears about roller coasters. There's so much else I could talk about, but those are the main things that happened this summer. But I don't want to talk for too long because I'm rapidly losing daylight. And my throat is getting, like, itchy and sore. Like, I can't talk. For, if I talk, I, I don't re usually talk for this long, you know? I'm not a full-time YouTuber. I post, like, every three months. And I, I feel like I'm yelling into the void sometimes. Which is honestly kind of nice. Like, just whoever is watching the video, it's kind of like a secret between me and you. Because it's not- I, I don't go around telling people these things, but I, I, I really want to just, you know, get it all out. Condense it into one video. And it, now, this, this part of my- the things that I've talked about in this video is public to the whole world. But that doesn't mean the whole world will know about it. Only the people who just happen to stumble across this video and take the time out of their day to listen to me talk about my life like you're my therapist it's just so nice it feels good to talk about everything that has happened to me you know my teenage years these are crucial as they say for your development you know i'm kind of in that stage like gen z you know where it, it's just like oh gen z they spend all their time on your app but like Gen Z, the oldest Gen Z is 28. I am not gonna, I'm not gonna like back, I'm not gonna like give out my age or anything, but I'm nowhere close to 28. At least from my perspective, you know? 28 seems old, pretty old to me. But like I'm on the, I'm almost generation alpha really. Not quite, but like kind of by some distant textbook definition i could kind of be generation alpha i don't i identify as i identify as gen z pretty i'm pretty much some of the last of gen z really but like they say that like all of gen z use the same slang i would i don't use the same slang as a 28 year old you know i don't have the same like I wouldn't post the same things on the internet that 28 year old would, right? It's like different. And it's not like every generation is a snap change. Like I have a little sister who is like fully, you know, definitely generation alpha. We're, you know, we're not born that far apart. It's like, well, we're kind of born far, far apart, I guess you could say, but like we, we grew up like in the same like era like it's not a snap change it's kind of a slow it's kind of a slow like transition i don't know the fact that there's already another gen generation like gen alpha that's sl they're slowly gonna take over the internet in the next five years you know there's already a new one and gen z already seems pretty real and then in 2025 in two years in a year and a half there's 
first gen generation betas are going to be born which is honestly crazy maybe i'm getting the years wrong but i kind of i feel like i think i remember generation alpha ends in 2024 <laughs> generation beta pretty crazy i'm spontaneous i'm lazy this video might be edited poorly i might just slap it up i've recorded this to get my feelings out and if you don't want to watch it because it it's kind because it's because it because it, it, it's bad quality which honestly it kind of is then whatever you don't have to watch it maybe no one will watch this and everything i've said in this video no one will ever know but you know maybe maybe so that that has been my life for the past two months i might even make another video about other things i did over the summer more minor things like going to wonderland getting all my favorite roller coasters more stuff that happened when i was at sleepaway camp because that was a really big part of the summer more stuff i crocheted finishing this bag finishing this tote bag you know maybe stuff for the fall back to school but anyways thank you for watching i am shocked that you have made it this far listening to my voice not many people would listen to my voice for however long it's been. I don't know, half an hour? Not many people would listen to my voice for this long. So thank you. Subscribe, I guess, like, people are, like, it used to be, like, creators trying to manipulate their subscribers into, into liking them. Now, everyone's so self-aware about it. They're like, subscribe, it really helps with the YouTube algorithm, because everyone knows by now. And it honestly doesn't even really help people say it helps to ask people to subscribe but like does it even matter like really like why would i bother to remember to tell you to subscribe? like the button's down there and people know if you want to see if you like a channel then you would subscribe to it i feel like i don't know maybe it's a generation alpha thing but subscribe get me being like a youtuber asking you to subscribe anyways see you in the next video whenever that may be thank you for watching this has been canola ciao